Hey you going, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to save your files in Illustrator CC. You can see how we've got these three lemons, and I'm gonna use these as an example on how to save your files. The cool thing in Illustrator CC, they've actually included, included a new feature. So if you get a file, and if you go to export, you can actually export as screens instead of just exporting one by one. So what this does, I'm gonna show you what it does. So to save all of these lemons, I can go to export for screens. So this new feature makes it all handy. You can see you've got artboards and you've got assets. Um, assets are pretty much just, you know, objects or shapes that you save from your artwork and you can save each asset separately, but we won't worry about that. And we'll just stick with the artboards. So you can see we have a selection. We can actually click clear selection on the bottom here and it's gonna clear the ticks on the boxes. And then we can just go and select the artworks we want or the artboards. So maybe I don't want this green lemon. I'm gonna tick that off and I'm just gonna save these two. You can also change the view by going to this little box on the left and change the grid view if you want. But I'll leave it on the default. So you can select it by using the mouse or you can go on the side here and you can select the by all or range. So if you have a lot of screens, maybe you're doing like a UI um, user interface or you're doing like a, a screen or something like that with a lot of like, you know, elements, then you'll have heaps of um, boxes here to choose from. So you, you might want to select a certain range from like one to the, the first 50 elements or something like that. Or you can click full document, but it's gonna save everything, not just the separate artboards. So we just wanna save the separate artboards like that. And then once you do that, you can actually export it to a certain location. All you do is just click on the folder here and select the desti destination. So I've just selected desktop, which is pretty sweet. You can also untick this box if you don't want the folder to open after export, but we'll leave it. And the cool thing about this is now we have formats. So we can select different formats already there for us and their presets. So if you click format, you can see I've got PNG, PNG 8, and then you've got JPEG 100, JPEG 80. What this means is means quality. So 20 is low quality and 100 is full quality. But usually try and aim for 80 because then the file wouldn't be too big, but it'll still retain its you know detail in it. And then you've got SVG and then a PDF, which is pretty handy. And the cool thing is you can actually add more so you can add heaps. So maybe you have to save it at different sizes. You can actually save it, you know, one times just means it's gonna save it at the artboard size that, that is already set. Then times two will double it, times three will triple it, and so forth. Then you can, you know, customize certain resolutions here um, as well. You can see that 216 PPI, and then you got, you know, width, height, you can shoot when you, which you can actually customize. Um, or even do 0 0.5 and, and whatever. So once you do that, you can actually select different formats. So maybe I want to save PDF and some images and maybe some JPEG versions. You can save all those out. And, you know, when you export, it's going to work. Also keep in mind the prefix. So you can put a prefix if you have a lot of files that are stacking on top of each other. You can do that as well. So now I can just go export. And because I made all these different versions, it should open. And you can see I have all these items open there. And my folder is a bit messy, but you'll see that. So I'm just going to go and delete all those. But you can see we've got our PNGs, we've got our PDFs, all there. So that's the fastest way to save files in Illustrator CC. Especially if you're working for clients, then it's the best way to do it. You can also go to export and go export as. Um, and then you can save it as specific files. So usually you can you know do Flash, JPEG, um, if you're using CAD programs, SVG, even a TIFF file and a Photoshop file. You can do it through here as well. So that's another option. You can also go to File, Export, and Save for Web. So with Save for Web, you got to select the artboard um, on your canvas, the one you want. And you can see I had this selected. And what this is, is pretty much like Export for Screens, but it's just one singular file. So you've got some extra, you know, parameters here to play around with. So you can see I've got GIF, JPEG, PNG 8, and PNG 24. So if I have a JPEG, I can select the quality here. By moving that. I can also go and load up a preset if I want, as you can see here, high, low, medium JPEG, and it will change it. You can also save settings here as well, but we don't worry about that. And then usually I leave it on progressive in the ICC pro profile. Don't worry about that unless you, you know, have to print it on a certain printer or something like that. And then you can actually select the um, size that you want to save it in. You can turn off the constraints. So if you want it to be a specific thing, then it will. You can also type a percentage in as well. So usually if I want to double that, I'll just go 200%. So then it'll double the resolution. 
um, which will in turn make it more detailed if someone's going to make it smaller. But of course, when you scale up images, it's not going to look too good. And then you leave on optimized and leave it on clip to artboard, and that's fine. And then you can just save that out. You can also press preview down the left corner here, and it's going to preview in your browser, um, which is kind of okay, but I don't really check it there. And then you can just click save, and then what it's going to do is it's going to open up, and you can save it to any folder you want, which is pretty handy. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. So that's how you export those files, save for web. And also there's a shortcut there as well. So all you have to do is go to File, Export, and you have those options there. Um, if you want to save it as a more specific, as a, you know, APS or AI, what we have to do is go to Save As instead. So you go to File, Save As. And we can actually go, I'm just going to choose my desktop. And then when you click this bottom, drop down the bottom, you can save it as a PDF, an AI, an EPS, a template for Illustrator, or an SVG. So these are your main files when you want it to keep the files editable for yourself and usually you do the export when you want it to save it in you know you're giving it off to a client or you want to put it online uh, media like on social social media or you're you're doing an Instagram post or something like that um, but when you're doing this this is for you know mainly editable files so then I can just save it and then you can just rename your file so if I go save it and you'll get this option box pop up. And this is very important. A lot of people don't know how to save it in a lower um, Illustrator. But what you do is click this drop down menu. And you can save it as a lower version. So if you're making a product or anything like that. Or someone has an old version. You can just select like CS3. And what it's going to do is going to save this file as a lower version. So they can open it up. And then to make files um, less weighty. And have you know not be too big. You can actually turn create PDF file, turn that off, and leave these two on. That's fine. You can also turn embed profile off as well. But yeah, if you create it as a PDF, it's going to make the files very large. And then usually I'll press OK. And then you can go locate it. And then once you do that, you can just you know, load it up, and it's going to open up as an editable vector and an Illustrator file. So those are pretty much the ways you can save your files. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see on YouTube. Um, let me know what channels or if you want to see a specific series. That would be pretty cool. And subscribe for more content. And I try to put out content every week. So yeah.